So this is sort of the start of the tutorial. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going- I'm- and uh, just to make everything clear, I am using Flip Studio Paint. Uh, so if you are using Photoshop or Krita or similar program, things might be a little different, but the tools I'm using should have an equivalent here. There shouldn't be anything I'm using that's really out of the way here. Uh, Xiuki, thank you, um, <laughs> welcome in. Hope you were doing well today. So what we're gonna do first here is we're going to hit this little icon that says, uh, lock transparency. And what this is going to allow me to do is color anywhere that I want to, and it won't affect, um, going through the... Uh, going through the lines or the color that I set right so anywhere where I colored something I can hit lock transparency and it won't leave won't leave the lines Do I like pineapple on pizza? Uh, Meta Knight, I will answer casual questions like that after I finish the demo <laughs> But what we can basically do um, I'm just experimenting with that. Yeah, really really helpful to use I'm constantly using this trick so alpha lock is very very useful sometimes it's called lock transparency other times it's called alpha lock on procreate i believe it means the same thing indonesia good morning <laughs> good morning to you too thank you so we what we're going to do is we're going to make this like let's uh give this a little bit of an anime hair look we'll give it like i don't know let's go with my color scheme right um I have this locked so I can select everything and it will only affect the areas that I've added a selection to. You can fill that in real quick. It's not entirely my hair because it's not that cyan, but you know, bear with me. And I'm just going to add a little bit of a gradient. Again, because we locked everything, it's only going where that orange paint was. So I put in the orange paint, I lock the layer, I can paint over it with a different color and it'll stay where it is. <laughs> Gruntil. <laughs> I love that. For the streamer, let's let's pick like a, a yellow, let's say. We'll also do the same thing with like a nice gradient. Kind of like a you can pretend it's like a, a fire effect, right? Little little streamer fire color. We'll just do all kinds of variant here with the color, right? And then for the arm, we'll do something like, I want this to be darker, medium, I guess, would work. And let's do something that'll show up. So let's do something like tiger stripes, for example. And again, anywhere I paint over here, it's not gonna show up. It's only going to go in the colors I've locked. So that's our first step, right? We've got sort of our tiger stripes here. We've got some strange tiger mascot, let's say. And we are getting to the part that uh, that Ginger's actually asking about. But it's important that I use gradients and stripes to demonstrate my theory with these things. So now we've got our gradients and stripes. We've got our hair, our ribbon, and our uh, tiger arm. <laughs> I'm using Clip Studio right now, Meta Knight. Thank you, Nixie. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another layer here. And this is the part that I want you to pay attention to, Ginger. Is each color on the same layer, or is each color on separate layers? This is also something that isn't talked about much. Different people use different amounts of layers. I personally don't use many. Um, all of these colors here, this is all just on one layer. This is all just painted over on one layer. <laughs> Dolphin. So this is the part that I want you to notice, uh, Ginger. This is my color layer. I'll label it so you can actually see what I'm talking about. This is our go going to be our shading layer. And I think this is our line art layer. Yeah, this is our line art layer. And I'll add a highlight layer. And it's gonna be the same situation depends on performance and comfort yeah exactly so we're gonna go into the shading layer and 
And I'm going to pick, let's say, a, a dark purplish blue. I can make it kind of saturated if I want. This can sort of vary from artist to artist. Different people like using different colors for shading. A lot of artists tend to use a, a slightly vibrant purple, right? And what I have here is the layer locked on the color, on one layer. Now I'm going to go one layer up. I'm going to bring this up a little bit more so you can get an easier seeing what I'm doing. Color shading. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this button right here that says clip to layer below. And you see that it has this little line. This line means that whatever I do to this layer, please lock it to only follow what's under here. Right? Please, um, please lock the opacity like we had before, where we couldn't paint outside the line, but do it so I can paint on a second layer. So, in the same way, this is, um, this is a new layer, so this is not the layer with the cyan and purple, but it will still behave the same way where I can't paint outside of it, because it's clipping to the one below. Using that clipping, I'm going to start putting in where I want the shading, okay? I'm going to put my shading in with, like I said, uh, I think a purple is going to sound nice here, and I'm just sort of going to add little bits to the edge. And then, here's the only thing I'm doing, Ginger. I am going to change this layer to multiply, which you can't see. Gosh darn it. And on one, give me one sec. Can I? I'm gonna see if I can do this correctly. Might not be able to, but okay. I think this will work. It says normal here, blending mode. I'm going to change the normal blending mode, which is basically our layer mode, to multiply, which you can't see here because it's being cut off. But right above color burn, there's one called multiply. It doesn't really look like there's been many changes, um, but it's essentially picking up the darks. And other colors will give it better effects than others. And then I'm just reducing the opacity here to something that looks decent. And now you can tell that this darker purple is seamlessly blending with this blue. So if I just make a stripe here, with my, um, with that same color on the same layer, you can see that the shading here is picking up from the blue and the purple and making something in between. I will keep the shading layer exactly where it is and let's get something like a dark red. This is still with a reduced opacity and this is still, um, with a reduced, uh, color. So this is now a red, and I can sort of go through it here, add shading where there'd be shading, and it's going to pick up the different colors automatically. If I make a stripe here, for example, you can see that it goes from like a, a light to a dark because it's picking up what's underneath it. I'd be able to come back and depend on how long you go be gone. All right, no worries, Meta Knight. Thank you so much for stopping by. Why is this not talked about for beginners? People get way too close to the product. They don't realize that it's something that other people aren't as familiar with. And then on the tiger, I think we're going to get an even more obvious result here. This is just cell shading. This is cell shading on a multiply layer. And immediately, easily blending with the purple and orange together, allowing you to have a dark purple and a dark orange. This is all still on the same layer. If we wanted to, if we thought that maybe this color red was not working, we could change our color for the hue in the shading. 
See if there's anything that might look better. Maybe we like uh, a green shadow instead of an orange shadow. Maybe the green shadow blends nicer with the yellow. And then we can do the same thing with our highlight, right? We can take like, let's say a yellow. And sometimes I use like to use add dodge if I'm doing something very intense. Or add glow, they call it. Uh, you can do overlay if you want something a little less intense, where it kind of blends uh, a dark and a light together, or you can use a screen. So let's say we use a screen with a yellow color. We can just go over it, and it looks white because it's in a screen mode. I'm actually gonna, <laughs> gonna make that look a little nicer here. And I'm going to sort of add it to everything else. I don't really need it where the shadow is, of course. But you can see that sometimes it looks yellow and sometimes it looks white. It's because it's picking up every color underneath it. Right? So on a yellow, it's going to look white. On a darker color, it'll look more yellow. You can start putting in some highlights here, for example. And then we can reduce the opacity on the screen layer. And now we've got some highlights. And what I usually like to do is sometimes double up on that. So I might do like a screen and then uh, more centered where the light is stronger. I might put in like a dodge glow or an add glow effect. And I can make things feel very dark or very vibrant. With only a few layers, we're only, um, there's only four layers, aside from the line art layer. <laughs> I understand, also the tiger arm looks like something from FNAF. Yeah, there you go. This changes everything. <laughs> but yeah, basically, play with your layer modes. Work with your multiply layer, work with your add glow, work with your highlight. If you want to make sure that it all stays together with this single color that you uh, set, then you can just clip all of these layers. All three of these layers are now paying attention to this layer below, which is our color layer. Anytime there's a line here, this red line, the last layer to not have a red line is what all the red lines are following. Hopefully that makes sense. So all three of these layers are following the color layer and it can't go outside if we remove this around you see that it can't can't do anything outside it's following the color layer <laughs> i i hope that helps explain things and i hope that that sort of opens up a lot of opportunity for you to quickly add shadows and such and then as you as you continue to do it, you'll find that um, you'll find that different shading colors work better for different applications, and then you can also mix that. So we put uh, we we did a shading color of just purple. Why don't we lock this so that we only paint in the shading color, and why don't we start gradating more of a pink because purple and pink are closer than pink and blue. We can start making things more vibrant just on this edge. And then where purple and blue are closer, let's keep that where it is. Yellow looks good here, but red doesn't. Let's try pink and red on this shadow, see if that works better. We may maybe want to play with a, a cyan or something and cool down the shadows, which is, you know, a whole other thing with, with light theory. And there's sometimes people who will do, um, like a sketch or something and they'll throw in one layer of shadow and then just do a nice quick gradient and it gives a very visually pleasing effect right and you can just sort of continue altering all of these things